This is actually a really important topic because even though veterinary behaviors say this all the time, I swear it's not just to justify our specialty, but in fact, behavior re problems are one of the number one reasons that animals get surrendered to shelters. So in this study, they went back and looked at a bunch of other studies that have talked about this many times. They're out there. Please go look. It's actually pretty important. I'm not just saying that. 10 to 28% of cats surrendered to shelters primarily because of a behavior problem. So when you're looking at about a quarter of the cats or even up to 30% of the cats hit near shelter door because of behavioral issues, that is something pretty important. If we found that 30% of dogs going to shelters had parvo, we would take that pretty seriously. So it's pretty much a similar deal. Now, of course, it's not contagious, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? It's important. So the most important problems that people report when they're thinking about and or actually surrendering an animal are, of course, the litter box issues. So urinating or defecating outside of the box, aggression between animals, and of course, aggression to humans. Now, in the United States, we keep most of our cats inside. At least that's what we recommend most of the time when we're in veterinary practice. So it's important to keep in mind that those are less likely to be relinquished than outdoor cats. And of course, we know they're less likely to have specific diseases as well. So around 35% of the cats we're keeping the dog, the, sorry, the dogs, the cats indoors all the time. We're about 56% of the cats were going outside part of the time. However, when we're looking at this in practice, it's part of what we do to make sure that the cats are safe overall is keep them inside. So not just to decrease their chance of relinquishment, but also to make sure that they have increased lifespan, that we can protect the natural environment around the areas where these cats are, such as minimize predation. People specifically are concerned about birds, although there are studies from back in the day that show that there may not be as much bird predation as we expect, at least if you're in England. Um, and uh, that we want to make sure the cats are staying in their houses. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is think about if we are going to keep cats in our houses, is that ethical? And if it is, then how can we make it the best quality of environment for a cat? This is a species that would normally be spending a fair amount of time interacting with their environment on any given day. And that environment, because it's outside, would be somewhat inherently changeable. Whereas in our environments in home, people, whether you recognize it or not, are extremely predictable. Even those who are trying to you know, juggle around their schedules and change their households, they don't. Things are really pretty much the same. And that can be, get pretty hard for an animal that is normally out and about doing some predation, doing some social interaction with other cats, and just experiencing the world at large. Because of this unchanging nature of the indoor environment, we find that some cats may be actually stressed and just loafing around because there isn't anything else to do. Um, so when we do studies on behavior, a lot of times we are trying to figure out how much environmental enrichment can alter a cat's behavior overall to help them be more normally active, keep them at a normal healthy weight, and to help protect their bodies from diseases such as interstitial cystitis or lower urinary tract disease. When we're thinking about environmental enrichment, we're really looking to try and change the habitat for the cat. So we want to make sure, of course, that we have their physiological needs met, food, water, shelter. That's the bare minimum. Behaviorally, we want to make sure that we have species-specific and individual cat specific plans. Not all cats play the same way. Not all cats like to rest in the same areas. We want to make sure that we have good environmental complexity, but not so much that it's scary. And that's, of course, going to vary by individual, as does the amount of exercise that any given cat may want, have a drive to do or need. We want to make sure that we are offering them the opportunity to perform their normal behaviors and we also want to make sure that they have the chance to make choices. Something that's pretty underestimated in behavior overall is how much animals will make choices on any given day and how they can vary.